<clears throat> this is Encore Football with a special video on Chelsea Football Club. Honestly, I want to laugh my head off so much right now, but this is a serious video. Yes, they lost 4-2 to Wolves. To our missing Huang Ki Chan, who is out in Qatar trying to win the Asian Cup with Korea, along with, of course, his best mate, Sodon Min. The Chelsea Football Club lost to a Yo Yo Championship Club, managed by Gary O'Neill, who was let go by Bournemouth last summer. Of course, eh, I, I would love to have Gary O'Neill as an England manager when, when we get, finally get rid of Southgate, but that's another story for another video. Chelsea have spent £300 million on Mudrick, Enzo Fernandez, Moises Caicedo, and, <laughs> and they're all terrible. Like, Dodd Bowley, or shall I really say, clear, clear late capital, has spent over a billion pounds on so many overrated players. In fact, if you take in the overhead costs of laying off Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who's just a layabout, who's just a mercenary, who just takes wages anywhere he goes, um, and of course the compensation fees they've had to pay to Graham Potter, Frank Lampard, and Thomas Tuchel in order to sack them, and keep... And so that you could have Maurizio Pochettino, who himself has got no idea what to do with these players. I think they've already clo spent close to about £2 billion in almost 18 months of running this football club. They are literally running it to the ground. And, you know, they brought in Cuckoo, who is having to play as a striker out of position because Breuer's not good enough and has, to, has been sent out on loan to Fulham. Nicholas Jackson is about as useful as a bag of peanuts. Thiago Silva is 40 years old and is still Chelsea's best player. I don't even know where to begin with this mess of a team. Ben Chilwell refuses to shepherd mascots on the pitch because he doesn't care. Conor Gallagher is a headless chicken, but yeah, he gets the captain's all band because there's no leadership in the team. I mean, on a serious note, Chelsea are an absolute epitome of what everything that is wrong with modern football. Now, how much do I feel sorry for Chelsea fans? I mean, we have to realise for almost 20 years, Chelsea were owned by Roman Abramovich, who of course has had a huge hand in the current um, Russia-Ukraine crisis and the war that's been going on there. Now, of course, I know a lot of Chelsea fans have been bitter saying, oh, the British government forced him out, but... Thing is, there's always been a shady side to Roman Abramovich. Yes, he was a great football club owner. I'm not denying that. He knew how to... Uh, he knew how to organise the best football directors and find the best managers at whatever time period in order to make sure Chelsea could keep winning trophies right up until about two and a half years ago. But we cannot look past the fact that he spent an absolute fortune and he turned the transfer window into an arms race. He pretty much... Chelsea, Man City, Aston Villa, Everton, Nottingham Forest, Newcastle... Man United, they have all spent an absolute fortune. And whilst, of course, you know, Newcastle and Aston Villa have paid the price at times, having been through relegation, and 20 years ago, Leeds United got relegated to the Championship and have never really recovered from that sort of thing. You know, Chelsea are now currently, what, 11th place on the Premier League table? They're closer to Everton than they are to Tottenham. Of course, Tottenham are currently in the top five. And, you know, I'm, I have to go back to my point about how I keep saying I would rather have a cap on foreign players because all this shenanigans of spending the most insane amount of money on players in the transfer market would diminish heavily because 
when you can already go and buy a maximum of five foreign players for your team under my ideas and proposals, the, the whole idea of going out there and spending a fortune on multiple marquee players would become redundant. Like... You, in order to build a good team, you would have to rely on your academy and finding the best players within your country of doing so. And people like Clear Lake Capital, the Glazers, David Dean, or whatever his name is, and all the, pe all the idiot owners we've had over the years in the Premier League, they would either disappear or they would just... Frankly, they, they, they would be restrained from speculating the most insane transfer prices, along, along with, of course, they'd be stopped from having to hand dish out the most ridiculous wages imaginable to these footballers. I mean, cause, let's face it, it's a global transfer market, especially with the likes of the MLS, Saudi Arabia... China, Japan, and maybe a couple of other leagues you could mention around the world. Having inflated all these transfer prices, it just makes no sense. And Chelsea fans, you, you've got to realise this is the club you support. Because if I was a Chelsea fan, well, I'm not really sure how to answer that question. Because, of course, I'm a Derby County fan. But if I was a Chelsea fan, I would have... I probably would have ripped up my season ticket ages ago. In fact, I probably wouldn't even support the fact, well, if I was born and raised in somewhere like London instead of, of course, Derby, I'd be probably supporting a club like Brentford, Bonham or QPR, who, funnily enough, are a bit of a mess themselves. But the thing is, like, you have to realise this Chelsea fan, Chelsea football club, brought your way to success like back in the 80s 90s you were a mid-table club and of course back in of course back in 1987 you got relegated to league uh, to, to what was the second division like i'm not saying that was it under my proposals you would literally turn into a championship club overnight but what will happen is that you'll be forced to run your club football club more sustainably if I if there was a cap on foreign players. Because frankly, there'd be no point in dishing out huge wages, salaries and transfer fees over players anymore. Because there's, there'll only be like at maximum five more key players for an entire squad. squad. But in, in, in every team in the Premier League. There's just been no point spending, I don't know, £300 million on Caicedo, Fernandez, Modric. That sort of money would be redundant. Like, OK, yes, I know you'll still get your Eric Cantoners and your Audrey Kosowski and, I don't know, Thomas Brolin's coming over to play in England. And yes, I know someone like Horner and De Bruyne in today's football league would still probably exist but they would probably be shared across all the best all the teams in England like all the best players would be spread across evenly all across the all across the top flight leagues all the all the top flight clubs in England France Germany Spain Italy like, instead of having Man City hoard all the best players along with Arsenal, Liverpool, Man United, Tottenham, and whatever, you know, it would be a form of an even playing field. And Real Madrid would have to start playing Spanish players again. Yeah, can you imagine Real Madrid actually having Spanish representation in their club? Oh, man, it's going to be a lot harder to win Champions League for... For banter from now on, won't it? And you know, maybe the likes of Porto, Borussia Dortmund, Ajax, Red Star Belgrade, Marseille. I have a chance of winning the Champions League again one day. Heck, stay at Bucharest, I have a chance of fighting for a Champions League again. But of course, you know, in my world, I would make the Champions League a tournament only open to league winners and and um, domestic cup winners.